two mounds make a V shape, that is where the bridge snow is. It's five miles in, about seven river crossings later. Now, we have been doing this, not us in particular, but the business has been doing this for 22 years, so we've learned the easiest trail for everybody. That's what we're gonna take you guys on today. It takes us about two to two and a half hours to complete. Now, that's not a sprinting pace, but that's not like we're stopping at every rock and like Photoshop and <laughs> that kind of stuff because that's going to take us forever. Our goal is to go bungee jumping. I want to go bungee jumping. So we got to get there first. And like I said, it takes about two to two and a half hours. Now, it's five miles. If you don't know it's five miles, look at your group organizer and just punch them because they should have told you you're going to hike five miles a day. And not only five miles in, but you got to hike five miles out. Okay? Now, if you're climbing a mountain like that or a mountain like that, you're lost. Uh, <laughs> no one's gonna find you. you. Just kiss everyone goodbye. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm today, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna save you. But you don't have to climb. Just follow the river back. You will always get back to your vehicles. As we approach the first river crossing, everyone's gonna be like, "No, not gonna do that." You're gonna get wet. It's gonna be cold. But once your feet go numb, it's not like you can feel them anyway. <laughs> Man up, cross through the river. We're not taking off shoes. We're not getting like the boyfriend girlfriend handhold or the, you know, none of that. Just cross through the river. Your feet go numb. You're just like, whatever. Not a big deal. You're gonna cross six times. Taking off shoes and putting shoes back on just slow us down. And it's worse to go through a river without shoes on. Trust me, it hurts. So just cross right through it. Your feet get numb. Not a big deal. When we cross through the river, we always lose people. Like they somehow they just lose their legs and they're downstream. <laughs> Don't act like you're dead. You know, try to save yourself. <laughs> you, but you know, make our job a little bit easier, okay? We love it. Everyone's like Jesus just walks right across it. We know there's not a lot of those today, but we hope. Um, bathroom situation. People have asked me already. There's that bathroom right there in that uh, corner. There's another one just like that down the fire road. At the end of the fire road, you'll see it. You gotta use it, run in front of the group, do your business, and then hop back into the group. Then it's all natural to cross the whole entire forest. Um, for river crossings, if you're really cold, just pee in the river, it helps warm it up. You can pee on bushes, rocks, off a cliffside, I don't really care. You paid your five dollars, do it wherever you want. Now for the guys, it's pretty easy, just point and shoot, simple. Ladies, it's Not more so complicated, much. but I don't know how to do it, but Eric does for some reason. Yes. Uh, over my time working here, I do now consider myself a female urination specialist. Uh, I have three techniques that have been tested and proven. And because all you ladies have never, not all you ladies have done it before, and you don't know the techniques, I'm going to show you. First is the classic hover. Spread them out, squat down, use those leg muscles. Now, the key to this one is you don't want to be doing it on a flat surface. If it hits the ground, it'll splash all over your legs, and that's disgusting. <laughs> Get maybe a little bush or something as a splash guard so it'll run down nice and smooth. Cool. For those of you who might be a little tired and a little cold, don't want to use those muscles, we have the tripod technique. Three points of contact. Yeah. Very simple. Now, the rookie mistake on this one is having your feet downhill. Because things, everything flows downhill, and once again, that's disgusting. Third one, we know ladies like to go in groups, you like to go with your friends and gossip and do whatever you do. So we have the buddy system. Yeah. <laughs> Dehydrated. Now, now, you can do that, guys. You can try that out. Doesn't work. <laughs> Especially when you're going number one, doesn't turn out too well. But uh, now, dangerous. We are in the forest. There are animals out here. There's mountain lions. There's bears. There's wasps. There's all the stuff. If you see a cougar, send, send it my way. To <laughs> area. Um, if you see a bear or a mountain lion, I'm gonna be running. I suggest you do the same. <laughs> Really, there's nothing that you can do. I guarantee you probably won't see any. Um, but what's really out here that can hurt you is that bush back there. It's called a yucca bush. It's born in Compton, and it came out here, and they like to shank people. <laughs> you will draw blood, and I guarantee you, half of you will get shanked today. So, take it all. There's poison oak. If you don't know what it looks like, me and Aaron will point it out to whoever's around us. If you don't, or if you're not lucky enough to be around us, just don't touch anything green or brown for the rest of the day. Boys and oak. GoPro. We'll answer that now. Uh, we'll allow GoPros, but you can't have them mounted to your head for the reason being when you're jumping, you're pulling them out of G force that's going to affect your neck, and you can't wear them around your wrist. You can only wear them around your chest. Um, if you have a chest strap, that's fine. If not, I could rig one up for you. 
but that's the way GoPros work. And the reason why he didn't explain the hand, hand we've had that, we tried it, people they flailed. They get the close up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to see blood. We don't want so, that. Other than that, we're, we're going to start the hike. For safety reasons, we're going to have Aaron in the front with all the men, and all the girls will be in the back with me, okay? <laughs> that's a joke. Don't listen to no. him. safety. Come on, ladies. Go. Serving this life for that la da 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 la da 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 That day I was thirsty, heard me searching, working, flirting We started my converting, serving And then we're serving this life for that la da 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 la da 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 If it's working, baby, try to serve it Verse your search and verse and then be nursing Swing for the chin, spins in a grin, sand Yeah, spin, then we'll win, win, win with your good hand With your other hand, operate around, round Wave it in the atmosphere, flagging us down, down here it's a fortunate place with the grace of your face to take me on a chase to the end, to the end of our day, where we spend, with every second we take, with our friends, we together, we together, this here in the present, we be flying in the desert, we be them, to the end of our day, where we spend, with every second we take, with all our friends, we together, we together, this here in the present, we be flying into heaven, we be... And we be with the giddy giddy figgy imagination of more than any gritty plug our city to civilization on a vacation, changing clothes in the park. I ain't listening, sounds good, I let them fall in my heart. We set our sails, gather and sail. Yes, it does, it does. I'm trying to find my bird call We heading south for the winter I give it a good go Tiptoeing through this mess that we call home We set the motion Don't so let me go Let me start searching What in front of me Let's head to convert Let's get to that Let's get to that that come down, make a 90 degree turn, and stop right where you're sitting, all right? We are also inspected by OSHA annually. They are the same ones who go to the amusement park rides like Disneyland, all right, and make sure that they're safe. But unlike Disneyland, we do not kill people here, no. all right? <laughs> so, in 22 years of business, going on 23 years of business, okay, we have a perfect safety record. Because of our procedures, because of our uh, equipment and our setups, but more importantly, because everyone does the techniques that I will show you today, okay? It took me a second there. All right, let's talk about what's going on here, okay? We have a side-by-side -side system, two platforms, all right? So while one person is getting hooked up, the other person is jumping. We will not do bungee races, even though that sounds really cool. We'll <laughs> two people hit and they'll end up smacking each other, being unconscious, and we'll have to do emergency rescue and retrieve them. Not so fun, would be pretty entertaining, I'm not gonna we lie. We have practice though, we do know what we're doing. So. <laughs> would be entertaining, but no, we're gonna jump one at a time. That being said, there are gonna be different cord sets on each side, all right? Cord sets are determined by your weight. Remember that weight that you got today and you're all mad, you're like, oh my God, it's not what I weigh, all right? Well, if you don't remember it, that's great because Aaron's gonna have it on a clipboard today um, to remind you what your what weight category you're on. So huge. We'll kind of explain a little bit more uh, what those weight categories are and what cord set you'll be on. But just know that there's two different uh, cord sets gonna be on at the same time. Okay. All right. So let's move on. This red fire hose, I know what you're thinking, you're like there's not a fire out here. But what this does is act as an abrasion protector for what's inside, which are two EE2802 crane lifting straps. That was a mouthful. Um, and they are in the choker formation. While they're in the choker formation, 
they can withstand 5,000 pounds. That's 5,000 pounds of braking strength, right? There are two of them, so that's 10,000 pounds total. Let's go to our connection right here. We have two steel locking rescue rated carabiners, and they're rated at 10,000 pounds braking strength. Any rock, rock climbers out here? Yes, okay, they are opposite and opposing and gravity fed, all right? That means they are in the safest position, all right? And they are very, very, very safe. 10,000 pounds braking strength, that's, that's pretty strong. All right, so we have two carabiners here. We have two anchors here, all right? We have multiple cords. Everything you see here has some type of backup, all right? That is what has kept us safe is the redundancy. All right? But not only will we have redundancy in equipment, we also have redundancy in manpower. So everything I hook up will be double checked by one of your qualified instructors, okay? You'll hear us sometimes talking to ourselves, squeeze check, lock check. It's not that we're crazy, although we may be, but it's actually us going through our checks, all right? So some of you will even get triple check, maybe a quadruple check, but at no point will every, anybody be only single checked, all right? So, this has been double checked. And everything that I set up yesterday has been checked by Aaron today. It was also checked yesterday as well. All right, let's move on to our cords. We have a multiple cord system. Has anybody else jumped anywhere else? Yes. Do you remember the what the cords looked like that you jumped with? Not quite as big. Yeah, it was like a one thing though. One thing, exactly. That's where I'm getting at. All right, that was called a New Zealand style cord. You've probably seen it in the YouTube video when the cord snap, right? <laughs> uh, they're using one cord. It's a big, giant, black rubber band. Now, that would break our rule in redundancy, okay? So, that's why we have multiple cord system, all right? So, if one cord breaks, you're cool. If two cord breaks, you're cool. Three cord, four cords, you're cool. And if the fifth mm -hmm. cord breaks, refund. Okay? <laughs> Just kidding, no refunds. You guys sign the <laughs> But in all seriousness, all right? Uh, each one of these cords is rated at 1,500 pounds braking strength. That's pretty good. On a four cord set, that's 6,000 pounds, all right? Now I'm gonna let you know the force that you guys are gonna apply today. You guys are gonna apply three Gs of force. That means you're gonna weigh three times your body weight. So a 150 pound person is gonna pull 450 pounds, all right? That means that these cords right here that are rated for a 150 pound person are actually how many times stronger? 12 times 12 strong. times stronger. That's ridiculous, all right? So you're gonna be really, really safe. These little guys right here, the little color-corded, like Christmas-looking ones on this one, <laughs> um, they are called core binders, all right? If they pop off during your jump, freak out, all right? No, I'm just kidding, don't freak out. They just, they're just there to make it look like they're one core, all right? We'll put a new one on when you get done jumping. All right, everybody, right now, this is Mr. Bumper. I want everyone to say hi, Mr. Bumper. Hi, Mr. Say, Bumper. You don't want to say hi to Mr. Bumper now? He's going to say hi to you in a little bit. And it'll look like this. <laughs> right? But that's what he's there for. He's a red fluffy pillow. He's for you guys, all right? So you can cuddle him. You can kiss him. You can grope him. Whatever you want to do, okay? Just keep him clean. Um, but that's what he's there for. Big, red, fluffy pillow, okay? Because if you got hit by these, not going to feel so good. All right, now let's move on to the connection where you're going to be connected. You're going to be connected on your waist harness, right? On your D-ring, which I'll go over in harnessing. Okay, right here. Again, with a steel locking carabiner rated at, anyone remember? 10,000. 10,000 pounds, right? But, of course, we're going to have a backup, which is connected to your chest harness, right? And this is an aluminum triple stage locking carabiner and it's rated at 5,000 pounds, okay? So you'll be hooked up here and here. And Jose Diaz, step forward. Should we go on small? Too long the way. Yeah, yeah. No, just that's it. Good? All right, cool. All right, everybody, if you take a look, Melissa. you'll notice they're color coordinated, Melissa. okay? Co color coordinated. Everybody get on the line, or uh, scoot up to me at least, okay. shoulder to shoulder. These are going to be our demonstrators for today, okay? So, they are, they each have a color. I should hold this, because Orange I, want, I need to pay attention. It's already recording, right. just Orange like, small. I have it on the front. Your blue is a medium, and your <laughs> larges are going to be your blacks. Now, 
pretty much right. everybody yeah. can fit into each harness, but you want to be comfortable, okay? So when you see someone about your size with that color, that's the person you want to get the harness from. A few rules before we put on the harness, all right? First, no smoking in the harnesses, right? for obvious reasons, right? Like I told you, everything here is flammable. Secondly, no leaving the bridge in the harness. If you have to leave the bridge for any reason, just pass it off to the next person in line, right? Because we're trying to get everybody jumping in a timely fashion. Um, and then lastly, no going to the bathroom on purpose or on accident in the harness, all right? That, that's just gross. <laughs> even if you are, even if you are a guy, I know it's kind of tempting because it's easy. Please just take it off, pass it to the person in line, and they come on back. Also, you're going to want to empty out your pockets, all right? If you have car keys in there, they look real nice at the bottom of the river, all right? So let's make sure to get those out of your pockets. Also, it's not going to be so comfortable if you have your wallet there, because like you'll see, these harnesses fit nice and snug. All right, first thing we want to do is grab it by the D-ring, okay? Shake it out, make sure we have two leg loops so it looks just like a pair of pants. Yeah, everybody see that? Now we're going to put it on just like a pair of pants. Now you will notice that these waist harnesses, okay, they have pads and these pads have wings, all right? So let's make sure that our wings are fully deployed. They are going to protect you from these buckles. All right, so once we make sure that our pads are fully deployed, what we're going to do is evenly pull it on each side. Now if you pull it all the way on one side, you're going to end up getting a crooked harness. It's going to look something like that. Also, we don't want to be sagging today, all right? That's going to be uncomfortable, let me tell you. So make sure to have that D-ring, right? Everybody sh shake your D-ring so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and play with it too much, all right? So that's your D-ring. That's going to come, that's going to be important in a little bit when I explain uh, how you want to come back up. All right, so once you're evenly strapped on both sides, what you're going to want to do now is kind of pay attention to me, especially well, it looks like it's all guys up here, so this is really important. If you got something sensitive and dangling in this area, you really want to pay attention. All right? So these leg loops, they're for your legs only. Make sure nothing else is in there. Then once, <laughs> once everything is clear, what I want you to do is squat down. Okay, sumo squat. Ladies, you will do this as well because I'm not going to assume to know what's down there. But anyway, we're going to pull down nice and snug. <laughs> There you go. Now, you don't want it too tight, okay? You don't want it too tight that you're like, oh my God, I can't feel my toes. But you can fit two fingers in there, that's pretty good, okay, guys? And you want these pads as close to the front as possible, okay? Now, ladies, don't get too excited. These kind of work up, work as push-up bras for guys, all right? So, it's only temporary. Guys, <laughs> right? All right, um, all right so now that we're all set, we got these little flippy floppies on the sides, right? And what they're going to do is hit you in the butt. Now you may be into that, but we're not going to do that here. So we're going to stay classy and tuck them right to the back. Okay, right here, over the top, through the bottom, over the top. Also, I think it just looks cleaner for your Facebook pictures. And like I said, everybody's here to just show how cool a bunch of jumpers are on Facebook, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, cool. So we're all set. Now who's going to be our first jumper? <laughs> Who wants to be the first jumper, guys? Anybody? Yeah? All right. Let's get Where's everybody else? Sit down. Let's give them a round of applause. For That's tempting. Guys, <laughs> if you do not, Dive at your flag, all right? If you do not dive into the appropriate flag, if you're on the right-hand side, you'll dive into the right flag. If you're on the left-hand side, you will dive into the flag in the yucca bush, right? If you do not dive at the appropriate flag, you will not go through the high point of the arch. Yes, underneath this bridge, there is a huge arc, arch. And in order to get to the high point of clearance, you need to dive at your flag, all right? If you were like, you know what? I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm on the right-hand side. I'm going to dive hard hard to the left, all right? It's gonna be awesome. You're gonna go out there, it's gonna be a beautiful dive until you swing back, hit the low side of the arch, all right? And Joe Dirt straight into the bridge. It's gonna be ridiculous, all right? So, 
That's why it's very, very important. In all seriousness, you can kill yourself or even, you know, just injure yourself, all right? So that's why we need to dive at our flag. That is gonna be our first rule of bungee jumping today. It is dive at our flag. Let's hear it. Dive at our flag. All right, so you know the importance of it now. Now that we know where our flag is, we need to do the next crucial point, and that is to climb over this railing, all right? It seems like an easy task. You can even use this red boom as a handhold, okay, to climb on over. All right, it's gonna look something like this. Oh my God, right? Because most people are gonna freak out. They're gonna hit this invisible wall of fear. You cannot see it, but you can feel it. I promise you. You're like, you know, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, there's a wall of fear right there. When you climb over that railing, it's gonna hit you like a thousand bricks. So, here's what I like to do, okay? I like to tell you guys the only way to break through that wall of fear all right, is to be aggressive, all right? Think about yourself as being like Super Mario, just busting bricks with his head. You know? <laughs> he just cannot care. He's aggressive, right? He gets a little star, he's like, yeah, boom, and he it's breaks the it. So we do a little Super Mario dance, bust through that wall of fear, all right? And we get on the platform, okay? We get into an aggressive stance. An aggressive stance looks something like this. Our toes are on the edge, our hands are pointing at our target. All right, that's aggressive. This one? Oh my god! <laughs> That's not aggressive. Or this one? Not aggressive. And then my favorite, the people who grab onto the boom, they're like, <laughs> no, that's not aggressive. Okay? Aggressive stance, toes on the edge, both hands pointing at your target. Now, we're gonna count you down. Actually, we're all gonna count down together because peer pressure makes us do things that we don't know. <laughs> we're gonna do a huge, big countdown. It's five, four, three, two, one. Bungee, and then you're gonna die. You're gonna die so big, all right? Just like Superman. Both hands out, all right? Superman never flew like this. <laughs> we don't do that Pocahontas stuff here, all right? It's ridiculous. All right, so Superman, you're flying. You're going so big. That's so important today, all right? That's gonna be our second rule of bungee jumping, which is go big. Let's hear it. Go, go big. Go big, all right? Moment of truth, Brian. Are you ready? Yeah. That way, like, you ready? All right. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> I hear all the men screaming like girls. That was a manly scream. Yeah, I'm gonna scream. Yeah, it was I scream. That was gonna sound like a girl after me. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Ankles after in two. Do it, man. That's the only way. You got that. Don't know by now, then you need more schooling. Let loose, kid, get stupid. Got more flavor than I know what to do. Wish to get your hands up if you're part of the movement and bump to the bump to the baseline. I made it right work before your phone had FaceTime. Yes, three, you know my steez. I stay fresh to death like I'm drowning in Febreze. Up, up, and away we go. Up, up, and it's making me glow. Up, up, and away we go. Up, up, and I like it. Up, up, and away. Your boy, and I'm post side. Wait until you're outside. I'm more like, Do you really want to jump? Moment of truth. All right, ankle dodge. He's crazy. Maybe the last one. 
been at it. I've been fresh. All eyes on my pen game. Good trade. That's Jill on Hall of Fame. That's Jill on Hall of Fame. Like Wallace, you pocket change. All of our presidents, no politicians. But every big face need your running mate. Yes. So jump crew. <laughs> jump crew. Yeah. Alright, we're done. Bungee jumping. We're heading back on a five mile hike. Five miles. That means today I did a ten mile hike. Yep. So what is it, like two and a half hours? My hips are killing me. My feet are killing me. I got stabbed by a stupid plant and Albert had to pull out the thorn out of my foot. It's not a good day for me. This plant, look. Show them the plant. Yeah. Yucca this plant thing right here. <laughs> so, there's the start of our hike. <laughs>